Let us uh, start our discussion um, for uh, three phase induction motors. So, in previous class, we have seen that how a rotating magnetic field is produced. So, rotating magnetic field, whenever you are applying a three phase supply to three phase windings, it may be in uh, star connected fashion or it may be in delta connected fashion. So, whenever you are applying R, Y, B, a phase sequence, then a rotating magnetic field of magnitude 1.5 times phi m will be produced at time t equal to 0 in vertical direction and it starts rotating in clockwise direction if the phase sequence is R, Y, B. If you are reversing the phase sequence, then its direction of rotation will reverse. So, this is the uh, its magnitude is 1.5 times phi m. Uh, the, um, uh, its uh, speed is given as the uh, synchronous speed, which is ns equal to 120 fi p uh, revolutions per minute, uh, where f is the frequency of uh, for Indian standards, it is 120, uh, sorry, uh, 50 hertz, and number of poles, maybe minimum two number of poles will be required or in uh, multiples of that, so maybe 4, maybe 8, so so on and so forth. So, the speed of rotating magnetic field will change accordingly. And uh, for a reversal of direction, you have to reverse the uh, direction of uh, any two phases. You have to interchange the phase sequence, any two phases, so that it will change the direction. Now, let us see the construction. So, as we know, for any uh, motor, there are two parts. One is the uh, stator part, which is a stationary, and another is the rotor part, which is rotating. So, basically, the construction of three-phase induction motor, uh, it is having a stator winding. So, the stator windings, they are uh, made up of laminated type of uh, construction and this laminated uh, type of constructions are made up of uh, stampings. So, this is one lamination or a stamping shown and uh, the thickness of this is 0.4 to 0.5 mm. So, uh, this is a simple uh, ring type of uh, uh, metal ring and uh, its thickness is 0.4 to 0.5 mm uh, thick. These stampings, they are slotted in the periphery. So, these are the slots of this um, particular uh, uh, stamping and these slots are provided to uh, hold the uh, stator winding and such number of uh, um, uh, laminations, uh, there are stampings they are laminated on one after another so that such layers will form the stator. So, this is the construction. The material of this uh, stamping is of silicon steel. Why it is used, uh, made up of silicon steel? Because it should reduce the uh, hysteresis loss. So, if you are using silicon steel uh, stamping, then its hysteresis loss is uh, very low. And if you are using such type of uh, stampings, the, uh, they are insulated from each other. So, uh, these stampings are insulated from each other and these, are, uh, these insulations will uh, make the iron losses to minimum value. So, this uh, uh, type of construction will have two advantages. Uh, such uh, stampings we are laminating so the, uh, and the material is of silicon steel. So, due to silicon steel material, its hysteresis loss is less and due to this 
stampings to be are laminating so due to this laminations iron core iron losses they will be at minimum value okay so this is the uh, type of construction of the stator and uh, the stator winding which uh, which we have seen uh, in previous class it may be of uh, star connected fashion or it may be of delta connected fashion so these windings are placed in these slots so these are the slots where we are placing the windings and the radial ducts are provided for cooling purpose and this forms the stator so for cooling uh, radially there are um, ducts provided and uh, due to this cooling will take place so this is the um, construction of stator so if construction of triple induction motor is asked you have to explain both the parts stator part which is stationary and this is the explanation and another part is the rotor which is rotating part now based on the types of rotors these uh, induction motors they are classified in two ways so the two types of rotors are possible in this uh, induction motors they are squirrel cage rotor type and slip ring or phase wound rotor so first is squirrel cage rotor as its name indicate it's a squirrel cage type of construction squirrel cage you know squirrel squirrel means khar sir khari te aple marathi te akhya hi kay na ki khari cha pathi var rama ne hat pherle hota ani त्या रामाची बोट त्या खारीच्या पाठीवर आजही दिसतात तर तीच त्याच्या म्हणजे त्याचप्रमाणे जसे रामाची बोट ते खारीच्या पाठीवर आहेत तशा प्रकारचे हे त्याच कन्स्ट्रक्शन आहे त्यामुळे त्याला स्क्वेरल केज म्हणतात किंवा दुसरा अर्थ इट इज लाईक अ केज केज मीन्स पिंजरा तर ते पूर्वी काही खार याच्यामध्ये पकडण्यासाठी पिंजरा वापरत होतो त्या प्रकारचा पिंजरा टाईप कन्स्ट्रक्शन झालं म्हणून त्याला स्क्वेरल केज असंही एक नाव आहे ओके सो दिस इज द टाईप म्हणजे त्याच्यावर ना त्याचं नाव पडलेलं स्क्वेरल केज सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाईप ऑफ रोटर हुज नेम इज स्क्वेरल केज टाईप ऑफ रोटर अँड अनदर इज द स्लिप रिंग ऑर फेज बाउंड रोटर स्क्वेरल केज टाईप ऑफ रोटर जे आहे ते इट इज मोस्टली पॉप्युलरली युज इन इंडस्ट्रीज ऑलमोस्ट नाइंटी फाईव्ह पर्सेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज दे आर युजिंग दिस स्क्वेरल केज टाईप ऑफ रोटर वेर आर ओनली फाईव्ह पर्सेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज दे आर युजिंग स्लिपरिंग ऑर फेज वॉन टाईप ऑफ रोटर कन्स्ट्रक्शन ओके अँड दॅट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द रगड कन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस स्क्वेरल केस टाईप ऑफ रोटर सिम्पल अँड रिजिड रगड कन्स्ट्रक्शन ओके सो दॅट इज द मेजर ऍडव्हान्टेज नाव दिस इज द रोटर रोटर पार्ट नाव देर इज अ गॅप बिटवीन द स्टेटर ऑर स्टेशनरी पार्ट अँड रोटर अँड दॅट इज द एअर गॅप सो दिस एअर गॅप इज युजली ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ पॉइंट फोर एम एम टू फोर एम एम so this is the gap air gap between the stator or stationary part and the rotating part okay so uh, this is maybe because these two should not um, uh, should not have friction amongst each other so that's why the air gap is placed between these two okay then uh, these two types we have seen now uh, let us see the construction of uh first type of uh, uh rotor that is the uh, square cage so it is of cylindrical nature uh this is the cylindrical nature uh, type of rotor so usually uh, this copper or aluminum bars so uninsulated copper or aluminum bars are uh, placed in the slots so this is the Uh, slot so this is a ring having some slots so these are the slots and through these slots the rods of copper 
or aluminium so this aluminium or copper bars they are inserted in this particular holes so that this um this construction uh, will be uh, um, rotor construction will be formed okay and then at the end these rods or copper bars or aluminium bars they are shorted to each other so that uh, with the help of end rings so end rings or copper rings they are usually shorting this particular all these bars so that whenever emf will induce in this bars the current will flow through this particular conductors that's why they are shorted to each other now this shorting will be through this end rings which are usually braced or soldered so these end rings they are braced or soldered at the end so that the construction will be rigid so that while rotating these uh, uh, this will provide this uh, braced or uh, soldered um, uh, end rings will provide the good mechanical strength while rotating uh, because this part is a uh, rotating part that's why it should provide a good mechanical strength and that's why this uh, end rings they are braced or soldered to this conductors okay now this is this entire structure form is looking like a cage that's why it is called as a squirrel cage type of rotor now these as these bars are permanently shorted by these end rings these end rings they are shorting these bars to each other that's why the entire rotor resistance will will become very very small and as this rotor resistance is very very small this motor is having a higher uh, means uh, um, of major importance that as the resistance is less the copper losses are minimum and its efficiency is high and that's why these motors are 95% of uh, industries they are preferring this type of construction that is the uh, square cage uh, type of construction okay now as these resistances are uh, or these uh, bars they are soldered or shorted together you cannot add any external resistance in that so that's why uh, the another type of uh, motor that is slip ring or phase lock bound rotor type of motor in which you can add the external resistance so for that there will, there is a separate arrangement of slip rings and brush assembly so as slip rings and brush assembly is required in second type of motor or rotor its construction becomes complicated and um, it is um, uh, the rotating part is there which is having brush and slip ring uh, type of constructions which may add again friction and uh, wear and tear so that's why that is the major drawback of this second type of motor and these all are advantages of first type or square cage type of rotor so uh, then at the end of this fan blades are attached so that the cooling purpose uh, for cooling purpose so that cooling will take place uh, as this part is rotating and we are connecting uh, fan blades at the ends so that the cooling will take place okay so this is the type of construction and uh, one more um, difference is there in this so instead of this uh, um, rods which are parallel it is shown in uh, this uh, construction that uh, this is the central central axis where the shaft is mounted like this so this is the shaft where on this shaft we are mounting this particular end rings and all the whole entire uh, rotor structure 
Okay. Now here in this construction, uh, it is shown that to this uh, shaft axis, these bars are parallel. But this is not the practical construction. This is just to um, tell you the explain you the construction. Uh, this diagram is drawn. But actually, practically, these rods are not parallel to the shaft axis, but they are skewed. Means some having some angle. That is, this ring and this ring. These two rings or these two holes are not in the parallel or not in the same align so this ring is twisted in some uh, this direction and this ring is twisted in another direction so that there is a skew between these two uh, between these rods that is this bars they are not parallel to this shaft axis so that they are making certain angle to this particular axis as you can see from this diagram now what are the advantages of making such skews so this skewing is advantageous because this is the rotating part and the rotor is rotating so a magnetic hum or humming noise or noise will take place if the uh, these rods are parallel to the magnetic axis the air which is inside this rotor it will make the noise uh, so that in order to reduce that that noise this screen will be important so this screen makes motor operation quieter so it will be quiet not having any noise this is first advantage second advantage is it makes motor operation smooth so smooth motor operation takes place that is the second advantage and the more advantage is the biggest advantage is third that is the stator and rotor these teeth may get magnetically locked if these are parallel like this then the rotor teeth may be locked magnetically with the stator teeth and this will entirely collapse the principle of uh, induction motor that we will see in uh, later on so this uh, magnetic locking it will be reduced due to this skewing so that's why this is the advantage of skewing uh, we have uh, made this skew arrangement to avoid the uh, rotor and stator magnet uh, teeth magnetic locking okay and uh, uh, most important is the it increases effective transformation ratio between stator and rotor the uh, uh, the ratio of transformation from stator to rotor it must be high so that the efficiency of that motor will be high so these are the four advantages of making the skew so that's why skew is uh, in um, added in this and this rods instead of uh, keeping parallel to the uh, shaft axis they are having certain angle that is the skew so these are the advantage of skewing so this is the uh, first type of construction that is the square cage type of rotor so if construction of three phase induction motor is asked you have to explain the stator construction rotor construction first of square tail and rotor construction of this uh, phase wound or wound rotor type of uh, motor or slip ring type of motor also so this is the rotor construction of uh, slip ring uh, type of uh, motor or uh, phase wound rotor type of motor so now its construction is same as that of exactly similar to the stator so that is it is having uh, windings so they are of either maybe star type uh, fashion or maybe connected in delta fashion so this is the winding of rotor 
same as that of stator now this winding it is mounted on the shaft and the another terminals remaining terminals after making this star or delta connection the remaining terminals of this winding they are brought together on this slip rings whereas these slip rings they are fixed mounted on this shaft so they are mounted on this shaft uh, these ends of this particular winding they are fixed to this particular r uh, slip uh, slip ring then this to y slip ring and this to b slip ring so there are three slip rings are there and at the end of this uh, these slip rings are of disc Uh, or uh, this type of nature so these are of circular nature and on this this winding uh, this terminal of this rotor winding is fixed and the another part of this they are in contact through the brush so brushes are rested on this particular uh, ring and through this brushes we can connect the external resistance so these external resistances can be connected to these windings through this brush and slip ring arrangement so this brush is resting on this particular ring so that this is in contact with this and this in turn can add this particular resistance this are uh, this resistance will be added to this particular winding this resistance will be added to this particular winding and this resistance will be added to this particular winding so these resistances can be added to these windings through this slip ring and brush arrangements usually these brushes are made up of uh, soft material like carbon and uh, these rings are made up of hard material so that whenever wear and tear will take place this brushes uh, due to this friction wear and tear of brushes will take place and these brushes you can replace it later on and this requires frequent maintenance that's why the construction of due to this slip rings and brush type of construction this uh, construction of this type of rotor it is a bit complicated now at start only these rings are apart to each other and this resistance will be added to this winding as this um, rotor starts rotating then whenever it reaches to its 70% of its speed then these uh, 70 to 80% of its speed these rings will be shorted together so that again the resistance which has connected which was connected externally it will be removed as these will be shorted together and this rotor will Uh, rotate further so the advantage of adding this resistance is only at start that means if you are adding this resistance uh, then few parameters like starting torque and starting speed that will be uh, varied and uh, in the applications wherever uh, industrial applications requires such type of high starting torque or variable starting torque or variable starting speed then only such type of motors are used otherwise the most of the 95% of the industries they are preferring the first type of construction that is square case type of motor okay then um, as after uh, in running condition this uh, um, slip rings they are shorted together again it will act as if it is a normal motor okay so uh, the possibility of addition of external resistance in the series with rotor with the help of slip ring and brush arrangement is the only feature of this particular type of rotor okay so uh, yeah this is the um type of um, construction of this slip rings that i have already told you it is of circular in nature so this is the um, particular slip ring and here you can see the brush so this brush 
is in contact and uh, these rings are mounted on this shaft whereas this another end of this ring is fixed at this particular end uh, winding is fixed on this particular end now this resistance which is connected externally this will be through this it will be in contact with this so that uh, resistance will be added in this particular winding again in this particular winding and similarly and whenever the rotor will um, uh, start rotating with its uh, 70 to 80 percent of its uh, speed then this uh, slip rings they will be shorted together and this uh, external uh, resistance will be disconnected okay so this is the uh, construction so if uh, construction of uh, three phase induction motor is asked you have to explain this uh, stator as well as rotor two types quarrel cage type and uh, second is the um, wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor then second probable question that uh, third probable rather uh, first probable question i have told you uh, how rotating magnetic field is produced then second is uh, draw and explain the construction of three phase induction motor third probable question is compare between squirrel cage type and wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor so if you want to compare then you have to write all these points this is a wound rotor or slip ring rotor this is squirrel cage type of rotor wound rotor or slip ring rotor as we have seen it uh, rotor consists of a three phase winding similar to the stator winding whereas in squirrel cage type of rotor it consists of aluminium or copper bars which are shorted at the ends with the help of end rings so this is the construction difference then in squirrel cage type of rotor we have seen construction is very simple as there is no uh, slip ring or uh, no brush uh, is uh, required so construction is very simple and rugged whereas the construction is complicated in uh, this uh, wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor as there are slip rings and brushes and these connections should be uh, there um, at start uh, the brushes or the external resistance should be in contact with the uh, winding uh, stator winding uh, sorry rotor winding and uh, then whenever the motor achieves uh, 70 to 80 percent of its uh, speed then uh, these uh, rings will be tied together or they will be in contact with each other that is all three rings will be shorted which will remove the external resistance that's why this uh, type of construction is a uh, bit complicated then uh, this squirrel case type of rotor uh, as the um, rotor conductors or bar they are permanently shorted external resistance cannot be added we have seen whereas rotor resistance can be added externally that is the advantage of wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor then slip rings and brushes are absent in squirrel cage type of rotor whereas they are present in case of um, wound rotor or a slip ring type of uh, motor then the construction is robust and maintenance free in case of um, squirrel cage because there is no uh, brushes um, which requires frequent maintenance whereas the construction is delicate and due to brushes frequent maintenance is necessary because uh, brushes are made up of uh, soft material like carbon so due to friction their uh, wearing and tearing will take place and that's why you have to replace this uh, brushes frequently that means maintenance will be required now in uh, squirrel case type of rotor due to simple construction the rotors are cheap whereas these rotors are very costly because you have to make that certain arrangement of slip rings and brushes okay then 
very common uh, spiral cage rotor type of motors they are very common and almost 95% of induction motors uh, use this type of rotor so that i have already uh, told you that 95% of industries they are using this type of motor there are only 5% of um, induction motors in industry they are using uh, such type of uh, slip ring type of rotors um where only they require that variable starting torque or change um, uh, they want to change the starting torque or the starting speed then in that case only these induction motor wound uh, rotor or slip ring type of induction motors are preferred then these are moderate uh, moderate starting torque which cannot be controlled so in case of squirrel cage type of uh, construction they are having moderate starting torque and which cannot be controlled whereas these wound rotor or slip ring type of motors they are having high starting torque and it can be controlled okay then in uh, squirrel cage rotor resistance starter cannot be used so for starting purpose we are using some starters so rotor resistance starters cannot be used in this type of construction whereas rotor resistance starters can be used in wound rotor type of motors then the rotor is automatically adjust itself for the same number of poles as that of the stator stator winding you have uh, made it for uh, wound it for a particular uh, number of poles but in uh, case of this uh, squirrel cage type of rotor you need not have to adjust the number of poles that rotor will take care and the same number of poles as that of stator will be automatically developed on the rotor whereas the rotor must uh, in case of wound rotor you have to wound that uh, rotor winding also for the same number of poles as that of the stator because here the uh, rotor is also of the same nature that is uh, having the winding as that of the stator so both stator and rotor windings they are uh, we are winding so um, they must be wound for same number of poles whereas here there is no um, uh, winding we are making um in this particular uh, type of rotor so the uh, squirrel cage type of rotor it automatically adjust itself for the same number of poles that of the stator okay then speed control of rotor resistance is not possible because the due to end rings we are uh, shorting the uh, bars aluminum or copper bars at the end with the help of uh, end rings we are shorting them so that's why uh, its resistance is very very low and uh, we know that as the uh, ends are shorted to each other we cannot add external resistance so speed control by rotor resistance is not possible in this particular method whereas in wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor speed control by rotor resistance is possible as we can vary the rotor resistance value we can change it speed okay then uh, as the end rings uh, the copper bar bars uh, copper or aluminum bars we are shorting with the help of the end rings the rotor resistance is having very low value and that's why the rotor copper losses are very less and hence having the high efficiency in case of squirrel cage type of rotor whereas this rotor copper losses are very high and its efficiency is low in case of the wound rotor or slip ring type of motor and this is the biggest drawback of this particular motor and this is the biggest advantage of this particular motor okay and now the applications so the squirrel cage type of uh, induction motors they are used for lathes lathe machines drilling machines fans blowers water pumps grinders printing machines etc whereas the wound rotor 
or the slippering type of motors they are used in lifts hoists cranes elevators compressors etc now you can see the difference in these two applications these two are having constant speed applications having low starting torque whereas here you will observe that these lifts hoist cranes they require higher starting torque and after starting you will not require any speed control in that that's why this type of applications they are using the um, particular motors of bound rotor or slipping type of motor where the advantage of starting torque and speed that is starting torque can be controlled or having high starting torque and high speed so that's the advantage of this motor okay so i hope uh will have to stop today because uh, i don't think uh, working principle of this induction motor will be um, complete but let us start i will uh, revise it uh, tomorrow's lecture also in tomorrow's lecture also so um, that is the that's all about the construction uh, and comparison so three probable questions we have completed now the next probable question in this is uh, draw and explain the working principle of three phase induction motor so i explain it uh, fast today uh, the um, principle working principle of three phase induction motor which i revise it tomorrow also okay so the um, working principle of three phase induction motor as its name indicates it is based on the induction principle that is the first principle used in this that is the induction principle now this is the stator winding so stator winding is shown having this is s pole n pole will be exactly at opposite side this is the part of that this whole circular part you can draw so exactly here s is there so exactly opposite will be the uh, n pole so uh, this magnetic field will be shown from uh, north to south that's why this uh, directions on this arrow uh, they are shown from north to south and this is the rotating magnetic field so rotating magnetic field uh, whenever we are applying three phase supply to uh, the stator winding it produces rotating magnetic field so that is shown here so rotating magnetic field and it is rotating in clockwise direction uh, which is shown here so magnetic field uh, of um, uh, this uh, stator winding um, it is rotating with a um, synchronous speed in clockwise direction now whenever uh, these are the rotor conductors so rotor conductor is a stationary now initially there is a, a no a motor is not at start so initially it is at rest so this rotor conductors they are placed in the rotating magnetic field because this rotor uh, sorry stator magnetic field it is rotating it is rotating and while rotating it is cutting this particular rotor conductors now whenever any conductor is at stationary position and it is cutting this particular magnetic field that means this rotor conductors they are stationary and the stator flux is rotating that means there is a relative motion difference between these two and due to this relative motion difference the induction principle due to induction principle emf will be induced on this particular uh, rotor conductor as the emf is induced on this rotor conductor and these rotor conductors they are shorted at the ends so as they are shorted at the ends current will flow through this particular rotor conductor 
and due to this current whenever any current carrying conductor is there it produces its own magnetic field so there is another field created now these two magnetic fields they will interact with each other to produce the motion and this interaction is you can see here on left hand side the direction of both these magnetic fields are same whereas on this right hand side the direction of this both these magnetic fields they are exactly opposite so there is addition of flux on left side whereas subtraction of flux on right hand side so that's why there will be addition or increasing on of flux on this side whereas it will be weakening of flux on this another side which will produce a mechanical force in this direction okay so let us stop here today we'll continue it in